Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about the bioanalysis of dried blood spot DBS by mass spectrometry for FDA-regulated clinical studies. Here are the learning objectives. To get familiarized with the current use of DBS sampling technique, identify advantages and limitations of DBS in regulated bioanalysis, understand specific considerations for DBS method validation and regulated bioanalysis. I will give you an overview of DBS bioanalysis and I'm going to talk about advantages and limitations of DBS bioanalysis and also the considerations in the method validation and sample analysis regarding the DBS bioanalysis. I will share with you two case studies and finish with some challenge questions. DBS was first introduced as an unconventional method in 1913. Later in the 60s, DBS was first used as a semi-quantitative uh, technique to screen the newborns for bacteria inhibition test. In the 70s, DBS started to be coupled with MS as a quantitative technique. After 90s, DBS became more and more popular to be coupled with LC-MS MS for the improved specificity and sensitivity for better quantitation. It has been widely used in virus fields, including clinical PK studies, therapeutic drug monitoring, among others. And today, the talk's focus is on the clinical PK studies. DBS has notable advantages for example, the sample volume is low, so it is popular for pediatric studies, especially for neonates. Also, because the sampling is less invasive, it is easier for sample collection at clinical sites. Additionally, it is convenient to store and transport the DBS samples. However, DBS bioanalysis also has its own limitations. First, it's the limited sample volume, which may challenge the assay sensitivity. Also, DBS consists of capillary blood, which is a mixture of arterial and venous whole blood plus interstitial fluid, which could make a difference compared to the venous whole blood or plasma in measuring the drug concentrations. Homogeneity and hematocrit variability would or could make a difference as well. Incurred sample reanalysis re is important to demonstrate the assay reproducibility. Here is how the BMV guidance published in May 2018 talking about dried blood spots. Specifically, additional validation of the sampling approach is essential before using DBS in regulatory studies. This validation should address at a minimum the effects of the following issues. Storage and handling temperatures, homogeneity of sample spotting, hematocrit, stability, carryover, and reproducibility, including ISR. Correlative studies with traditional sampling should be conducted during drug development. Usually, it's important for the clinical sites and the bioanalytical sites to work together closely to ensure sample integrity. The critical steps include sample collection, transportation and storage, and sample analysis. This is especially important for the regulated DBS studies. Regarding the bioanalytical method validation, thorough routine parameters should be addressed. For example, calibration curve, quality control samples, accuracy, precision, and recovery, selectivity and specificity, stability, and dilution effects. Additionally, some DBS-specific method validation parameters should also be addressed, as mentioned in the guidance. 
for example, the homogeneity of sample spotting, hematocrit variability, storage temperature and stability, carryover, reproducibility, including ISR, and internal standards, IS. For DBS sample collection, homogeneity of sample spotting should be addressed. For example, the blood collection method, sample collection card, shape and size of the blood spots, drying conditions of the blood spots should be considered and evaluated. Here, I am showing you a valid sample, which includes a sufficient quantity of blood to soak through and completely fill the pre-printed circle on the collection card. On the other hand, there are also the so-called invalid samples. For example, they didn't have enough quantity or they had too much. Samples were not dried before being shipped or samples appeared to be super saturated, diluted, discolored, or contaminated. For DBS sample handling, transportation, and storage, humidity should be monitored right after collection and during transportation. Temperature and analyzed stability should be monitored and evaluated as well. For DBS sample processing and analysis, it usually starts with separating a segment of the DBS using a punch, and that's called punching. To minimize the bias of homogeneity and the hematocrit variability, it's usually recommended to consistently punch from the center or close to the outer edge, and the size is usually 3 to 6 millimeter. Next, the samples would be extracted through protein precipitation or other extraction methods. After that, those samples could be analyzed using different techniques as the regular bioanalysis. Here you can see some examples of the screenshots of how this punching is conducted. Now let me share with you two case studies of the regulated DBS bioanalysis studies, you will see how their approaches were different depending on the methods and the drugs to ensure data reliability. The case study number one. It's a pediatric PK study submitted to an investigational new drug, IND, application. The analyte was a small molecule drug, the matrix was DBS, and it was me measured by LCMS-MS. During method validation, the routine parameters were evaluated, including the calibration standards, QCs, accuracy, precision, selectivity, dilution, recovery, matrix effect, carryover, stability, and reproducibility. For the DBS-specific parameters, storage temperatures sample homogeneity variability, sample volume variability, and collection media variability were also evaluated. Additionally, for the sample hematocrit variability, calibration curves and QCs were prepared at 45% and 25% levels to evaluate samples from 15 all the way through 45% hematocrit levels. During sample analysis, the samples were visually checked at the bioanalytical sites upon receiving and prior to sample extraction. Samples were tested using calibration standards and QCs at both 45% and 25% hematocrit levels. All the analytical runs met the acceptance criteria for both CS and QCs, showing the method was performing well. The results showed hematocrit variability of an 18% difference from two different hematocrit levels, which showed it was meaningful to using, C to using different levels of hematocrit levels to measure the samples. No samples were reassayed and the ISR met the acceptance criteria. Case study number two. 
It's a pediatric PK study submitted to a new drug application, NDA. The analyte was also a small molecular drug and the matrix was DBS. Methodology was LCMS-MS. During method validation, the routine parameters were evaluated, including calibration standards, QCs, accuracy precision, specificity, selectivity, carryover, matrix effect, stability, and robustness. The dilution factor was established at 10. For DBS-specific parameters, the storage temperatures, homogeneity of sample spotting, including the position of punching, blood spot size, and volume variability were also evaluated. Regarding hematocrit variability, curves and QCs prepared at 30% hematocrit levels were used to evaluate the samples at 15, 30, and 45 hematocrit levels. During sample analysis, homogeneity of sample spotting was also visually checked prior to sample extraction. Regarding method performance, 10% of the analytical runs did not meet the acceptance criteria. 15% of total subject samples were reassayed because they were determined to be false BLOQ below the limits of quantitation. Remember we talk about during the method validation, the dilution factor was established at 10. So those reassayed samples were diluted with a lower dilution factor, and 85% of them yielded reportable results. ISR was also evaluated, and the results met the acceptance criteria. Currently, it is uncommon to use the DBS bioanalysis alone in the clinical studies regulated by FDA. What is the purpose of the study is always a good question to ask first. As mentioned in the BMV guidance in 2018, correlative studies with traditional sampling should be conducted during drug development. And sponsors are encouraged to seek feedback from the FDA review division early in drug development. Additionally, it is good practice to customize and optimize the DBS bioanalysis based on the drugs, study subjects, study design, and other factors. To summarize, we talk about the advantages and limitations of regulated DBS bioanalysis used in the clinical PK studies. I'd like to have your attention on the importance of close collaboration between the clinical and the bioanalytical sites for quality sample collection, handling, and integrity especially the training for the clinical staffs are very critical. I also emphasize the DBS specific method validation parameters would be evaluated and understood as needed. Last but not least, it's always important to customize and optimize the DBS bioanalytical methods based on the drugs, study subjects, study design, and sample handling conditions. With that, I would like to thank my colleagues in the Division of New Drug Study Integrity and the CRESS team in the Office of Study Integrity and Surveillance for their support and assistance. I would also like to thank Dr. Chong Wu Yu from the Office of Clinical Pharmacology for his input. Now it's time for challenge question number one. True or false? There is no limitation to use bioanalysis of the dried blood spot DBS in the clinical PK studies regulated by FDA. A, true, B, false, C, depends. The answer is B, false. There are certain limitations to use the DBS bioanalysis as we mentioned in this talk. Challenge question number two. 
which of the following method validation parameters should be considered for DBS specific bioanalytical method validation? A. Storage and handling temperatures. B. Homogeneity of sample spotting. C. Hematocrit variability. D. Stability. E. All of the above. The answer is E, all of the above. Thank you for your attention. Please let me know if you have any questions.